Win big in 2024 with rotoballer.com's MLB Premium Pass. It includes our preseason draft kit, 15 exclusive lineup tools, and the Team Sync platform. Get customized rankings for your specific league format. Sync your leagues with Team Sync and use our new live draft assistant. Then get customized advice for your scoring settings. Get a discount for any MLB Premium Pass using my promo code Knuckler, K-N-U-C-K-L-E-R. Just visit rotoballer.com. Sign up today and start rotoballing like a boss. This podcast is also brought to you by Parlay Play Fantasy Sports. Use my referral link and my referral code Roto Brady. Get that sweet, sweet deposit bonus and get in those player prop parlay contests. They got free contests, paid contests coming to a state near you. That's a great format. Go check it out, folks. And what is up, everybody? This is Brady Grove bringing you another interlude episode of Roto Baller's official MMA podcast. Tap that. It's an off week for the UFC. This is Sunday, January 28th. As you all know, I love the spring and alternative professional football world. I love the changing landscape of college sports that the last few years of the NIL and the transfer portal, the greater exposure at all levels of college sports for athletes that have a chance to take it to the next level. I love it all. And with me today, he is described as a running back slash fullback, 5'9", 210 pounds, coming out of Elizabeth City State University, a 2023 draft prospect looking for his first pro opportunity. That description, by the way, is brought to you by Luke Miller. Uh, follow him at Luke Miller PFN for spring football updates. But give it up for Jari Pitt. Jari, thank you so much for being here, man. How you doing today? Yeah, how about yourself? Oh, man, I'm doing good. And, you know, I- I'm glad we were able to put this together so quick. And first off, man, so Elizabeth City State, that is a Division II school in HBCU out of North Carolina. Uh, are you like a North Carolina native, and it, it, that was like the regional area for you that kind of brought you there? Yes, I am. I'm from uh, a place called Ahoski, North Carolina, and it's about an hour away from Elizabeth City State. Okay, and so, like, was that just a place that reached out to you during your high school career and wanted, to, wanted you to come up there? Well, actually, uh, they show some interest, but I originally went to a school called Methodist University in Fayetteville, and they're a D3, and then after my sophomore year, I transferred to Elizabeth City State, and during that time, uh, like, COVID hit and everything, so uh, they actually, as a HBCU, like, I saw, like, how they poured into their students, like, the opportunities that they gave, and, you know, just the HBCU culture, like, it stood out to me. And so that's that's something we can start off talking about because over the last few years, HBCUs have. Hold on, are you hearing like a little bit of like feedback in the back? Like I'm just making sure that isn't me. No, you're good. Okay, okay. So, um, HBCUs over the last few years, there's now you know showcase games and you know events set up just to showcase talent at the HBCU level. This is an era now where D two schools have their own network. You know, a lot of those conferences where you can watch all those sporting events, there's more information out there for scouts to evaluate than ever before. So, you know, what are kind of the resources and the opportunities you were talking about that appealed to you uh, to do an HBC level? Well, uh, some, always, uh, some, well, I got a chance to play in a bowl game called HBCU Pigskin Showdown. And that was an opportunity where uh, me and like some really good D2, I mean, like D. D2, D2, I mean, D1, D2, like D3 football players who play for HBCUs, we got a chance to go to Alabama for a week, you know, kind of like look at the culture of what they had and also like get to showcase our talent in front of NFL scouts, uh, indoor football scouts, CFL scouts, and like that. That was an opportunity that a lot of us don't get because of like us being from like those smaller cities. I mean, you can go to Texas and find a couple of HBCUs, Alabama, Georgia, so, you know, for them to come all the way out to Elizabeth City State and, you know, want some of us to go, it was a great opportunity. And it's it's crazy to try. Because I will talk a lot about, you know, the issues with scouting, you know, uh, just from the fact that so many players, you know, fall through the cracks and don't get noticed. You see them succeed at a different level. Um, but just the sheer amount of volume that's out there at the D2 level. There's so many D2 schools, a lot of people just don't get to follow that season. Uh, right. What do you think are some of the reasons, that, for whatever reason, for high school, that, you know, it, it was the D3 and the D2 that came calling for? Uh, I think a few players, like, that have gotten the opportunity to play in the, like, NFL or 
like USFL, XFL, those different leagues, and also like the CFL, like they've made their mark because they, I think those scouts found diamonds in the rough. Like, you know, we seem to have that different passion and that work ethic. Like, you know, we're always fighting because we're always looked at as not being as good as, you know, those at those bigger schools. So we have that grit about ourselves. So like, no matter what, we're not complacent. You know, I play with guys who I see like, who I know could play on Sundays. Like I played against guys who are like playing on Sundays now. And it's like just that opportunity to know that, you know, it's that much talent in D2 football, like D3 football, it makes a difference, you know. And there's a lot of times it seems to be uh, because of where those other guys are from, that could be the reason why they end up at the school that they do. And Jari, someone who is this, like, to someone who put a discount on a player from the D2 football and say, you know, not playing against the same level of competition as the D1 player. You know, what are you responding? What would you say in response to that? Because now there's so much talent in football, basketball, and baseball that you you really do find legitimate talent all the way down to the NAIA and JUCO level. Right. I would tell them, uh, well, when they come out there and step on that field, I mean, you know, they think just because we're not a D1 school, like the talent's not the same, like, the same way a linebacker in a D1 school will smack you in the mouth, I see one at D2, D3, NAI, JUCO. Like it's, it's all about what you're willing to put into it like to get out. I mean, you know, if you're that good a player, you know, you, of course you're going to make some other players look like they're not that good, but it's all about how bad you want it. I mean, this is just like at D1 schools. I mean, if you don't want it bad enough, you know, you don't look as good as those other players, but because it's a very competitive sport, like we're competitive people and we know where we want to go, of course, we're going to – you might not think because of where we're from, you know, it's not the same. But if you get out there on that field, I think a lot of people will change what they – change that comment. And so, like, the NAI – NAI – NIL came up, you know, while we were a college athlete. And it changed things, you know, at every single level, and in particular for women. Um, and so, were, were there any things that ETSU did – you were there to try to kind of, even though they're at the top level, to try to, you know, keep pace with the times and try to make sure that they're doing everything they can to excel in sports. Oh, yeah. Like, they were they were definitely putting us as players out there. I know, like, uh, I got an opportunity to uh, collab with a brand called Stadium Merch. And, like, they gave me the opportunity. Like, they made, like, hoodies, uh, T-shirts, like, hats, book bags, like, everything. So, I got the opportunity to do that at, uh I had a couple of team. I had a teammate who was actually sponsored by Crocs because of you know NIL. One uh, who get sponsored by Body Armor, you know, like uh, what's this? It's another one they do like uh, like water and different stuff like that. So I got the opportunity to, like play with some guys who actually got some of those deals as well as get one on my own. And it was it's a pretty surreal opportunity because you know being from a smaller place and going to a small school like Elizabeth City, like, you know, it, it makes you feel good. Like, you know, someone's out there looking at you, you know, you're doing a good thing. And it's so funny too, man, because like not long ago, we were telling, you know, they were, we were telling kids growing up, like, you know, have backup plans because not everybody can be a pro athlete. And then you look at so many people that it's like, what is the difference between a pro athlete and you know, a very large portion of college athletes now, you know? And it's like, it, it was so unthinkable just a handful of years, uh, uh -huh. a few of years ago. Uh -huh. And then you get, like, like you said, like there's hoodies, there's t-shirts, there's, you know, deals with, and you, you see your name on things and you're actually able to profit from it. It's amazing. I think it's an amazing opportunity. Like, you know, just the different deals that are out there to actually, players get a chance to be a part of. I mean, because honestly, I mean, it's a lot of money being made off of, like, football players and just, like, from other sports as well. I mean, so I feel like that's a good idea for them to be able to, you know, make some type of, you know, money. I mean, there are a lot of, like, stories before because of not having NIL. Like, a lot of college athletes were poor going through college, and their only opportunity was to play football and everything like that. But now this helps students, you know, as student athletes get that chance to have some type of conversation in their pocket, you know, while they are playing the game. And, you know, it, it also lets those athletes that take themselves apart or have a personality or charisma, it, it lets them take greater advantage of that, you know, because it's not just about the fact that they're, you know, the athletic offices, the TV networks, they're the ones, you know, that are making money for the on-field project. Um, but it's about like, 
you know, there's cameos out there. You you could go, you know, to your hometown in North Carolina and put on the Jari Pitt football camp and and make money. Or you could have, but you know, back when you're in college. So it's it. I think like before NIL, and I've said this at like endless length on this show. But before NIL, it was like, who's this really going to affect? And it turns yeah. out that it was everybody. Right. So where did your – because I know you were a 2023 draft prospect. Uh, and so, like, in between that time, is that where your Army service came up? Like, where did that come into the career timeline? Actually, my Army service came in during my uh, – the end of my freshman year of college. Uh, there was a master sergeant who had been knowing my dad for years, and he would always ask me, you know, want to join the Army, want to join the Army. So finally, I was like, yeah, I'll give it a chance. So I took, like, a practice ASVAB test. I did well on it, and then, you know, we went to the, um, like, the initial entry part of it, and then, so, I ended up liking it, like, took the test, did well on it, and I I just had taught me a lot of toughness, but uh, it was definitely, you know, just it's played a pivotal point in my life. Like it's helped out a lot. Like uh, a lot of people don't think a lot. I think a lot of people, when they think about the army, they just think about war and all that stuff, but it has a, it's played a big part in like, you know, my education, like my education is paid for, like, you know, regardless, you know, I'm, I can get master's degrees, doctorates, you know, and it's because, you know, of my service for the country. So it's, it came in uh, after my sophomore year. That's not what the basic training, like officially, but it's just, it's been a big part of like who I am. Like it, it, it teaches you values and it's always helping me like, have that tough is like on and off the field. And so there's the psychological aspect of how that's helped. And then, you know, we from every level, there's, you know, the way the Coast Guard football plays, the way Army Force play, the Citadel, VMI, like there's very like specific types of people that do very well for those football players, especially when they're running an offense that is advantageous for them, like Army and Navy and the Air Force have done for years. One of those positions is running back fullback because those teams pound the football, you know, the, the vast majority of the time. And that's why, you know, teams like Army and Air Force lead the country in rushing, you know, the last few years. So, like, you know, one, how what's a unique aspect of how just your time in the Army has kind of like made you a different kind of, you know, physical player? than than you would have been otherwise because there's the psychological ad, uh, advantage but there has to be a unique kind of physical conditioning aspect to it uh and then and then we can kind of get into talking about the fullback position but but first i want to hear like the the unique you know physical uh conditioning aspects of the army service oh uh, the army has they put you to some very intense physical training going through like basic training and everything but i think one thing it taught me that like you know, like, like it's always some more in you. So, like, while wow, like there, there are days like we ran a long time, like we worked out for a long time, and like, and the more I did it, the more I just came. Like, I felt like I got, uh, like tougher and stronger. Like, and I didn't, I didn't get tired as easy. Like, my body was able to take more, like more outside in those like super hot days. Like, I wasn't tired. Like, we were, uh, we we did things called rucks where you carry like you know a bunch of things in like your rucksack and you carrying your your weapon. And I would like we were wrecking for like twelve miles, and you're just walking, not being tired or anything like that. And I think as I got on the field, I was taught like when I was on the field, like, I'm I'm not tired, like I'm tough, like I was bouncing off hits and different things like that. So it's it played a big part in like the physical aspect of it. Um. Oh damn, I had to, oh so like going through the post college process, even though no one would ever say it, do you ever think that like your your army service or just the nature of your position has ever made pro teams a little bit more hesitant to give you a chance since you've been in college? I think it could, especially now with everything that's going on in the world, like, you know, with people being sent like different places because of the army. But I mean, I would also say like, I mean, it's, it's all a, it shouldn't deter teams. It should also show you that, you know, you have someone who's fighting for your country, like who you like, you know, like, they're a loyal person. Like, to fight for your country, you have to be loyal. You know, they're a hard worker. Like, you see what the Army puts a person through. I feel like that should make them want to take someone who's in the Army, like, that much more. I mean, like, you see someone who's hard working. Like, I don't complain about working out. Like, I'm, I love it. Like, I, I do it every day. Like, hard. Like, 
And when I get after it, it's no like playing games or anything like that. Like I'm getting to it. Like, you know, I show up on time early, you know, I'm willing to leave late if I have to, but like, that's just one of those things you get um, along with playing ball and being in the army. Some people take the opportunity like for granted, like I'm one, like I love it. Like there, there won't be any problems. And I, I doubt that there's ever issues with, you know, people with military service being, you know, a great personality to have in the locker room and, you know, at, at practice and everything. And the whole thing about Army service or military service is being really good at team building up, you know, working yeah. together in a team, to, you know, towards a team goal. So it, it's, it, it, but it does seem like something that if other people in the professional football world if they didn't understand that or think too hard about it, it's something that they might miss. Right. Like, uh, teamwork was a big part of it. Like, one thing about the Army, like, for me, I went in, like, had that football experience in the first place, but knowing that you have to deal with, like, a lot of different attitudes in the Army, like, it, it makes you understand that sometimes you have to, like, you know, just try to see things from other people's side, but also know how to, like, conduct yourself. So just, like, playing on the field, like, you might get frustrated, but you have to understand that, you know, sometimes you got to be patient and you got to take your time with different things. And so, you know, the nature of your position, running back slash fullback, first of all, is that the way that you would describe yourself? Because that's just a, it's a description I've seen, you know, across several different profiles, you know, and doing research on you on the internet. Um, but, you know, is, is that how you would describe yourself in the way that you were utilized throughout your college time? I would say yes. Like, I'm, 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 I love running the ball, like, and I just love being in the backfield. But I think one thing I took pride in a lot was, like, my blocking. Like, I, I enjoy, like, pass pro drills, like, pass pro in the game. Like, I loved it. I mean, you know, because it's another way to make an impact without having the ball in your hands. And a lot of people don't really like to block. You know, if they see big D linemen or linebackers coming, like, they kind of stray away or try to, like, you know, give them a side shot. Like, I enjoy that part of the game. So, you know, I don't – and I don't mind blocking for others. Like, they need, a like, a slimmer guy, you know, to come in so he can just – dart up the field, hey, I'll block for him too. Like, I've blocked for quarterback leads, quarterback draws, and it's, it's fun being able to get out there, you know, just kind of own somebody without having the ball in your hand. And, you know, the running back position, you know, it's been ever-changing for, you know, the past 20-something years. You know, since every offense in the NFL basically became the same kind of offense. And the fullback position even less so because – Football in general, way less of that hard hitting, you know, every every inch counts kind of feel to it. How were you utilized throughout the different stops that you made in that really like because you know every scouting thing that I've seen says run, this guy can block, like this guy for everything that he could be asked to do in this position, he can do it pretty well. So, you know, how are you utilized throughout your time in college? I was utilized as a guy where, like, of course, like, I got a chance to run the ball. I enjoyed it. But, like, if, if coaches knew, hey, I need I need these yards or I need, I need this block to be made, like, they were calling me. I've been in, like, plenty of games where uh, I had a coach one time. He said – he told my running back coaches, I need your best blocker in the backfield. And all and even all of my, like, running back teammates, they said, all right, it's time for you to go in. Let's go. Like, no matter what it was because they knew, like, I enjoyed blocking that much. I took pride in it. Like, there were even some days where, like, we might be in practice and, like, coaches putting in, like, certain plays and, like, we get in the backfield, like, no, nah, I want to block for this one. Like, I don't care who runs the ball. I want to block for Like, just, you know, because you know your ability and how much you take pride in something. Like, you know, bl blocking is a huge part of the game. Like, if nobody blocks, nobody gets anywhere. And it's crazy. They pull back of all things. In, a, in an era of football where everybody is looking for their – Taysom Hill, or for their, like, Swiss Army knife, a guy that can do multiple things. You would think that the fullback position would become a lot more popular just because you can use him in a running back capacity, blocking, and even even you being at 5'9", not the typical head of a tight end, you can use a fullback in very similar ways, you know, and going out for short yardage plays and, and you know, blocking in those kinds of plays, too. So, if anything, you would think that the feedback position would be gaining popularity in this era, but that has not seemed to be the case. I think there's just been, I guess, like a miscommunication, like along somewhere. I mean, because fullbacks, a lot of them can do everything. Like they, we, we are, we are, we need to have the speed and everything of a running back and be able to do the tight end's job, the lineman's job, and just like running backs. So I feel like a lot of times they've taken running backs and just made them 
those types of guys. So, you know, like you have some guys who play running back now who are nice size and can do anything you ask them to do. Like you hardly ever find Derrick Henry's everywhere. Like he's just a load of a man. And, you know, you also have, you know, your Gus Edwards, guys like that. So guys who can do that ground and pound, but you can put them out in space and catch the ball or you need them blocking the backfield. But uh, I think a lot of them just – I think they just kind of forgot about fullback and thought like they could just do it with some running backs. But you see teams like the 49ers and the Ravens who utilize a fullback because they see how vital it can be. And, you know, the 49ers, too, you know, with uh, with Kyle Juchek and uh, the Bengals had a player like Ryan Hewitt just a few years ago. who I thought even was, you know, still pretty underutilized. And schools that come out with, I mean, North Dakota State has been fullback you for, you know, the last few years. Uh, and. It, it seems like there are just uh, there's a very select few niche pockets of people that know how to use that position properly. Most of them just shredded everything they had on that position. Right. I feel like if you can use a fullback in your offense, like you're opening up more opportunity for plays to come through. I mean, because if you see those guys who actually play fullback, they've given there made some really vital plays for teams when things are on the line. You know, everybody, you know, and like those short yardage situations, they see out formation, they expect the fullback and running back to come straight up the middle. But when you have that fullback who can sneak out in the flats and still pick up those yards, like I feel like that's a really vital thing that a lot of teams and coaches like kind of forget about. And, you know, a, a place where like dual, you, as versatile as possible, you know, role has been big is like the indoor football league where a lot of people, you know, play multiple positions um, and you see a lot of fullbacks also play linebacker, defensive end, uh, things like that. And that kind of brings me to the next topic, which is you're looking for your first opportunity really in professional football. Um, what was the last year like? What What have you been up to, you know, since you were done with college football? Uh, the last year has been just a lot of like me reaching out to different coaches and, you know, different staffs. Uh, I got the opportunity to work out for the uh, Montreal Alouettes. I did that. I was in Charlotte. I got a chance to work out for them. I had a pretty good day there. Uh, never heard anything back, but like I knew, like I put some good, I put out some good things on film as far as like running routes, catching the ball, just you know being being a good running back, being a good football player. And I also had the chance to work out. Uh, I went to a trial for the in DC for the DC Defenders, and I had a good day there. Like it was fun. I enjoyed it. You know, just the XFL opportunity was just you know really amazing like to see how many guys showed up for it and how many guys who are fighting for opportunity like me but like in the meantime I just been like reaching out to uh different coaches you know different like staff members and some things have, you know I feel like things have been coming around I'm just like being patient believing God I'm just working hard every day like every time I get opportunity when my feet touch that ground I'm getting after it every day and the DC defenders now that is a team that I think would know how to use a fullback properly that was I mean, essentially, the way they used Abram Smith this past year in the XFL, and there's not a quarterback on the D.C. Defenders roster this past season that couldn't run if they needed to. Uh, and it, so it, it, you, it sounds like you, like you put, like, good feelers, good word out there, like, by getting those opportunities. And not just, like, you know, because some of these staffs can be a little protected in how they talk about players that they work with. That's a little silly, especially if you're not going to sign someone, but you know how, like, different groups are. But – you know, it's also that there's way more, you know, internet talk and media coverage of all the alternative professional football leagues. You know, if you do a workout for the Montreal Alouettes, it is entirely possible that someone's writing a, an article about that, you know, on, on some different space. So it, it really, like, as long as there are professional football opportunities, you know, the, the media coverage and all, I mean, podcasts and Twitter accounts and blogs have come along to kind of like, you know, press the fast forward button on the, the development of some of those. Right. Uh, I think social media has played a big part of me even getting these opportunities, you know, like Luke Miller helping out, like even me, like pushing my own self out, but like social media has become a vital part in players getting that opportunity. I mean, because social media kind of runs everything. If you want to find out something, you can go to any social media platform just about, and you're going to find what you need, if not more. So I, social media has definitely helped out a lot, you know, just being able to communicate with different coaches and the staff members. Like, it's been amazing. And so, you know, there's more, like, options for you. I can't imagine what it's like right now if you're an athlete looking to find professional opportunities. 
there's services, there's scouting profiles, there's people, you know, pay people to make videos, or they have a, at least a friend who can do it. There's podcasts and all these di- the the different media outlets that cover it. What is, is, has this been so far? Just like you personally reaching out to different staffs, or do you, do you have you know anybody that you clearly have representing you? What's the goal? this whole thing then like of trying to get together the the resources that you might need so that, you know, any teams out there that might be interested in your services are going to, going to know who you are. Honestly, it's been like me, like doing a lot of it. Like I've been sending out, you know, like, like a mini bio with like all my highlights there. And, like, and I've actually got, you know, some staff members, the coaches that hit me back and say, okay, like, you know, you, you look good. You know, I like it. Or, you know, I like, we'll be in touch. Like I remember there was an, there was a time where a guy, I think it was the director of team, player personnel for the San Antonio Brahmas, uh, Jose Jefferson. We were actually, like, in great communication, like, talking. You know, he was telling me, you know, I like your film. It's solid. You know, we'll be in touch. But I guess along the way with this merger, like, you know, either he's been busy and just, like, so many different things happen. You know, and it's been a lot of things. I'm just you know, knowing that. You know, somebody of his caliber and his status told me, hey, like, you know, you have good film, you know, we'll be in touch. Like, it lets me know that I can play on that level and I'm just, you know, waiting on that opportunity. And, you know, the Brahmas, too, man, like, that's a team that's exactly how they used Jock Patrick the last year of the XFL. It's smashing forward. Right. And, you know, it, it has been crazy with the merger, too. And it's a damn shame, man, because I wish – even if there was only one league and they merged, I wish there were still 16 teams because now, you know, as stacked as some of these spring teams are now, you know, you got three quarterbacks that could start in a spring league, you know, on one roster for a lot of teams and all the best wide receivers are in, but there's just a lot of people that, you know, who were looking for an opportunity in professional football that might've got pushed to the back of the line because it's an arms race right now in these spring leagues. Right. Uh, I think the merger, it, it did some good things and some bad things. I mean, like, there are a lot of good players out here who are, like, out of an opportunity or, like, you know, they're – either they were right there at it and they got, like sh- – and they got shorter because of this merger. And I think because of that, like, because of them going from 16 teams to 18, it really took away a lot of that talent. Like, I mean, there is a lot of talent that is, like, not on a roster right now. And if they got a chance to be on that roster, like – I feel like all 16 teams could have great teams, to be honest. Now you're just like eight powerhouses. Like, I mean, and even those other eight teams, they would have had them. It'd be the same thing. I mean, there's a lot of players who can do some great things, like, out here. And people don't realize it either because there's – there's the NFL, and they all have people on camp deals and practice squads. There's so many great college football players that you don't even know where they're at because of, you know, how temporary these deals are. And honestly, the the disservice that I think it is is that I don't think the NFL team give too much a damn about a lot of those guys. You know, it's like, I hey, will sign this guy for a little bit. We'll move on. Like, But it's like, dude, that guy could be quarterback and has a lot to offer i don't think they think a lot about it because it's not a situation that they often hope to be in and even right. desperate nfl like franchises I, I think there's a lot of sticking with the status quo and it when it comes to football scouting and not really throw too many crazy ideas out there because you don't want to look you'd rather you would rather look like you're not doing anything sometimes as a football scout than end up saying something bold that makes you look bad at some point but the leagues out there, there's Mexican professional football. The the IFL is expanding because of, you know, the, you know, other arena leagues being defunct, but there's the indoor football league. There is the AFL coming back, coming to Cincinnati. And hey, if you don't have an opportunity by the time that league starts, I hope to see you in Cincinnati uh, as the starting fullback for what my arena football team will be. But uh, okay. there's, you know, European league football. There is Japan X league. You know, so are those things that you consider, you know, when you're looking for an opportunity and it's got to be, it's got to be hard, but you seem like a guy who would be comfortable traveling if necessary. Oh yeah, most definitely. If if that, if any of those opportunities knocked in my door, like I would not hesitate to jump on them. I mean, it's the opportunity to put something good on film and enjoy, like just enjoy the game that I've, I've loved since I was, you know, a kid. So I feel like any of those opportunities would be amazing. It's just wild because, you know, Europe really is 
that's ahead. Germany, you know, has been, you know, getting more and more prospects, you know, in, in the NFL ranks. Um, in, in Japan, you know, they every time they pick up something like football, just give it a few years and they're going to be really, really good at it. Uh, but ultimately, it's more and more opportunities for great college football players to, to find an opportunity to play pro. And the fact that some of these leagues are able to succeed and grow just shows that football fans around the world are interested in watching it. Right. I mean, there's there's ample opportunity, especially like a lot of the for a lot of these like different leagues out here, like for players. I think it's just you know getting that information across there to them, like so they can see it. Like I, if like if any like team or anything I see, like I definitely like don't hesitate to reach out to them. I mean, because any opportunity is a great opportunity, especially when you know it's what you want to do in life. And and I'm not expecting any answer to to, to be what I but. Five nine, two hundred ten pounds. You sound like a guy that if you committed yourself to mixed martial arts, that you'd be able to do it well. This is normally an MMA betting podcast. Is that something that you've ever considered? Because I gotta say, I'd love to see you fighting in the light heavyweight division. Uh, I've never thought about it, but I mean, I don't feel like it would be a horrible idea that you bring it up. I mean, it, uh, I feel like it, I feel like it can expand, you know, like you know, just me in different ways, especially like as far as being athlete. I feel like it could definitely help. So. Don't you say that? It's kind of peak managers as well. I mean, Dave, if you just like started going to like some MMA wrestling classes, who knows? Maybe that, that maybe that helps in some degree in the blocking and hitting world. Because I know you also, and uh, I think that I saw something too that you've also ex- like excelled in special teams throughout your career. Uh, and so, if it ever comes down to that, maybe wrestling something that gives you another tidbit to lean up uh, to lean back on. Oh yeah, most definitely. It's- now that you say it, it's, it's, it wouldn't be too bad of an opportunity to jump on. Um, well, that's something I'd be very, I, I'm going to get, obviously I'm going to continue to follow your career after today. And whether it be an opportunity in pro football or somewhere else, uh, you've only found success everywhere you've gone. So I'm interested to see what's, what's next for you. But, man, we've had about a half hour conversation. I've learned a lot. It's been interesting. I love talking about all the different levels of, of competitive football now that, the, the alternative pro football world is so crazy. And it from the way that people are exiting college now, it's such a more interesting dynamic than it was even 10 years ago. But folks, you can follow Jari Pitt at Jari, that's J-A-R-E-E underscore 21 on Twitter. Jari, if there is anything else that you want to say, anything you want to pitch about yourself, whatever it may be, the floor is yours. Uh, I would say that whatever team and ever like staff decides to take a chance on me, like they won't regret it. Like they won't ever have to look at me like, oh, like this kid doesn't work hard. Like every time I step out there on the field, weight room or meeting, whatever it is, they can say, okay, this is the kid. And like we had, you know, if we had 10 more of these types of guys on the team, like we would be amazing. So I'm the guy that when I, when I, when opportunity comes my way, I will not waste anybody else's time. Folks, this has been another interlude episode of Roto Bowlers Official MMA Podcast. Tab that spring football season is coming up. It's been quite an off season. You're going to have to start learning now to familiarize yourself with everything that's going on in a couple of months. This has been an episode with Ja Re Pitt looking for an opportunity in professional football. Follow him on Twitter. Check him out. Share his information. Make sure that the word gets out. Folks, this is an off week for the UFC. Hopefully, I'm coming to you on Monday with this. So have yourselves a great week. Tune in next time for my picks for another UFC Vegas event. Have a good one. Peace.